be something you're aware that you could do is that I'm going to clone this repo and you could clone into a different repository. You could name it something else. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say this is going to be wiki stack simple testing demo. And so now it'll just clone it into that repo and I can end up going into CD wiki stack simple testing demo. And if I was to go over here, let me actually just make sure I don't have a bunch of other stuff running here. Try to, again, you know my style, just try to keep things as simple as you can. Um, have as few tabs open as you really need. So uh, one of the things that we could do here is that this is, you know, set up already, and I've got the, the database set up on here from before, but I should be able to say um, uh, npm, uh, let me also just throw one other thing out of here. If you end up cloning a repo and you want to basically turn it into your own GitHub repo, I'm not saying steal it, I'm saying, you know, whatever. You don't want it to be a Git repo anymore. RMRF, Git, now it's no longer a repo. So this way I can basically create a new repo, git.init, and now I can end up adding my testing to it. This way I can push it up so that, you know, it's its own repo. So again, if you, the only thing that makes a Git repo a Git repo is the fact that it's got a Git folder in it. That's it. Get rid of the Git folder, it's no longer a Git repo, right? And the fact is it's not that big a deal if you get rid of it because you cloned it from somewhere anyway. So just reclone it again. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so uh, if I say npm run just to see what I have here, uh, I'm going to specify npm run test dev. And what I don't have so far when I end up cloning a repo, I don't have my node modules. So npm install. So I'm going to specify npm run test dev. Okay. So right now I've got all my tests running. These were all the tests that I ended up showing with you. Again, it, it served us well that we ended up, that this was set up in a way that we had our uh, seed function. Because that just gives us something that we could right off the bat start testing, right? If you recall, the, the, the big sort of takeaway from the weekend was really how to use SQLize. And a big chunk of that was, again, if you sort of think about how these four files end up getting split up, right? Just a little bit of review. DB is our entree into our database. ORM, object relational mapping, we're mapping code to a database. So we have to have a database. So that's what this DB is. If we look at any of the individual models, they're going to use that DB to define things. So here we've got a title, we've got some text, we've got some tags, we've got a default value, and we've got a getter method, which allows us to uh, get a summary of our content. We end up exporting this story. For user, we end up uh, you know, doing something similar. It's a little bit of a simple model. And our index puts all these things together so we can set up our relationships here. We bring in our two models. We've got a couple of uh, tasks here. We've got seed and we've got sync. Seed ends up relying on sync. So syncing will create all the tables. And now we're going in and we're creating uh, some users and stories here. Well, one of the first things that we want to do is that we want to be able to have some method that will create both the user and the story. So now this doesn't exist, but let's just imagine for a second that we could go over here and do something like, I'm going to get rid of user create here, and I'm going to get rid of user create here. And what I'm going to operate on is a healthy... Um, path that says that I'm going to be able to create 
with user and by passing in a user. And so here my user is going to be prof. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is going to be a string. Thanks. You guys are fast. Very fast. I'll go over here. Same thing. This is mine again. And Mitch has two of these. And another one. And, and let me also fix this as well. So, you know, even going in and just doing this with the test without even writing any other code, we could say, hey, you know, it'd be kind of it'd be nicer if we didn't have to create the user first. Create with user. Sure. You also have user ID up to the side. Should you take that out? Yes. Thank you. So that's exactly right. Um, so I should go over here and get rid of this user ID, right? Because I'm actually getting, going to be creating these with the user. I'm passing in this object that has all the data that I should end up needing here. And I'm going to go in here, get rid of this. Now, of course, when I do that, I'm not even going to get very far with my tests because I'll find out that I've got all kinds of validation errors that are happening here. Okay, a um, couple of things also that I want to note. You can see that our we've got a lot of SQL that looks to be sort of muddying our waters a little bit with our tests. We could clean things up quite a bit. And I always forget where this is, but actually in this DB object, there's a second parameter. By the way, you could set this as an environment variable if you want to say, hey, look, maybe I want to see this sometimes, maybe I don't. But you could set up logging to false. So this is going to determine basically what ends up getting logged when we run our queries. And now we see less data. We see that we don't have this create with user as a function. So let's actually set this up. And again, this is going to be a class method. So at the same level as we have getter methods here, let's do class methods. There's two types of methods. There's class methods and there's instance methods. And remind me, I'm going to talk to you about the instance methods a little bit later. Class methods uh, are basically methods that are on the big model. Okay, and when we think of big model, big story and little story, big story would be the model that defines the table. Little story would be a row in the database. It would be what we would think of as an instance of that story. So for these class methods, uh, I'm going to say create with user. And I'm doing this uh, in particular using the function here, not the ES6 syntax. And I also told you I'd give you a better example of why I'm doing that, although I don't have it for you at the moment. Um, but it has to do with um, wanting to control the context where I want, uh, I'll basically lose the context that I'm supposed to have if I don't do this. So here when I say create with user, let's just say I'm going to pass in some attributes. So now let's just see what happens here. Okay. Now, basically, nothing really happens, but it doesn't say that I don't have that method because I do have that method. So what is this going to look like? Well, so this becomes a very interesting thing. And the interesting part about this is that I'm really sort of mixing up my user model with my story model. And there's nothing wrong with that. The first cut might be to do a require for the user model. Because really what I want to do is something like uh, user uh, find one where name is attribute dot name. Right? I want to basically find that user. Now, the question is, what is my user model? Instead of requiring the user, the DB object gives us a models property. And I've got the DB object here. It gives me a models property user. Now, again, why lowercase user? Because that's how we defined user. Okay? By the way, why did I define it with lowercase? You see I have story here, lowercase. Why did I end up defining it lowercase? I'd like my tables to be lowercase. Just how it is, okay? Um, 
the bottom line is this is what's going to give you, I mean, this is the actual model, and I think I showed you before. If I was to do a, um, in this method, if I was to do a console.log um, story equals db models.story, and I, sh I think I showed you this before, I would get true. They're the exact same thing. And, and you're doing this with the db models user to make it more clear what's going on? No, I'm doing it because I don't want to, I don't want to start, I don't want to do the required because I don't want to end up with, first of all, it gets a little bit muddy. Second of all, I, you know, I feel like I'm going to get circular dependencies where for the user side, I'm going to be requiring the story. and the story side, I'm going to be requiring the user. Uh, something about that just sort of bothers me. Uh, just something that you like you try to avoid. So, I don't know whether or not it's going to bomb out on me, but I just try to avoid it. No. And the reason, again, as I said before, the reason why it's not is the same way that we would do dbmodels.story, because when we defined it, we defined it with lowercase. It's not that it exports. It's just the, what ends up getting put on the DB object. This is the name of it on the DB object. I know it's a, it's a little bit confusing, but you know, just look at where you ended up defining it. Now, once I end up doing this, right, we could come down here and put a then in. And if, in fact, we have a user, We'll go over here and say, if user, let's return that user, OK? You can, but we, we really are on a, on a bit of a time constraint, especially with, the, with uh, you know, recording this. So I think let, let's get through a little bit more of it. And then uh, I'll, if you could remember your questions, that would be great. OK, so let's go over here. Once we end up doing this, again, we, things you're going to, and by the way, I'm messing up with it right here. I, I do this all the time. Make sure you return your promise, OK? And so what we're going to do here is that when we end up, uh, we're going to do a return. And we'll go over here and we'll say DB models user dot create. And we're going to create where name is equal to attributes dot name. Now, in either of these cases, we should have a user. And if, in fact, we have a user, what this will give us the ability to do is to now say um, DB models, and I'm going to say DB model story. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say DB models dot story. And now I'm going to create, I've got my user. So my user ID is going to be the user's ID. My content is going to be the attributes dot content and my title is going to be the attributes dot title and that should be enough to get my test to pass so again it's the same logic let's just see what's happening here uh, let's try one thing So let's take a look. Expected four, we're only getting two. And let's just see why. Expecting two, we're getting four. Find one attribute dot name. Let's also, we could take a look and see what our database looks like even at this point. So let's go to psql. And our database here is going to be Looking at our package JSON file again with our test. So this is going to be this database. And I'm sure I'm just not passing something, but let's just take a look. Um, and let's take a look. Select star from users. Ah, no name whatsoever. That's not good. Well, let's actually do a couple things here. So let's see why it doesn't have our name. That should be an easy fix to find. 
we end up going over to our index file, create with story. I called it user, and I'm actually referring to it as name, 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 name. And if we go back here and we run this, our test should end up passing. Now, let's do, you know, at this stage of the game, I mean, if you did something like this, you could easily go over here and say, uh, get dot status, see what you changed. Uh, actually, this is our first commit because we got rid of the other one. Get dot add dot. So now we've got our commit here. Now we could also go over here and do another thing, which, and by the way, this would have solved that issue too, is that when we go over to user, so again, if you're not really putting any constraints on your column, and there's a lot of constraints that you could put on it, but if you're not putting any constraints on your column, you don't need to have an object here. If you are, you end up putting in the type. And what I want to do here is that we're going to go over to our type here, and we'll specify unique is true. Now, one of the things that we could do is that this is not, not breaking anything here. I mean, if we wanted to test out that this would work, right, we could go over here and get kind of cute with this and, you know, put something right in our story here and try to create another user with prof and see that it ended up throwing an exception or that sort of thing. But we could go and actually go in and put a test in for this. And again, it's not necessarily that this is the be all and end all of testing, but you know, we could go over here and specify, we could do a describe, describe creating a user who exists. And we could say what's gonna happen, the user will not get created. So what we could end up doing over here, and again, if we just did that, nothing should end up breaking. There's no assertions that are here. Um, and we could go over here and specify, well, what do we really want to have happen? Um, this is going to be asynchronous. I'm going to put a done in here. And I'll go over here and I'll say uh, DB models dot user and I'll do a create and I'll go over here and I'll say name is equal to prof now what's going to happen here is that I'm not end up going to get I'm not going to get to this done right because this user already exists so this is going to nothing really is going to happen with this and in fact if I end up making it to this done then I'm really in trouble, right? If I end up making it to this done, I've got a little bit of a little bit of a problem going on here. Um, but one of the things that we could also do here, uh, yes, uh, no. See, all right. This is a distinction you have to make, and I know that this is a little bit confusing. What I'm doing here is that for convenience. Okay, for convenience, on my index object, okay, for convenience to the rest of the outside world, okay, to the rest of the outside world. Again, if I'm if in my if I'm in my um, SQLize objects, I'm going to go and access that internal models property. But to the outside world, I'm actually exporting my models here, okay. I don't want the outside world to know all that much. I'm not going to give them my DB object directly, okay? To the outside world, they get this. The outside world gets user and story. And I capitalize user and story. Maybe I should really learn a lesson and just go with my database tables and start them out with uppercase, and there'd be less questions. But they're really two different things. Here, this is what I'm exporting, okay? And again, I'm calling this thing DB, so I understand it being a little bit confusing. But this is what I'm exporting to my outside world. As far as my outside world is concerned, maybe I'm using SQLize, maybe I'm not. They really have no idea. 
all they know is that I'm exporting these models that they can do things with and end up saving data, inserting data, and deleting data. So let me go up to this test. And we're seeing that creating a user who exists. So again, this is my models that I'm exposing. Uppercase, if I go to create prof, what I can do here is do a catch, which is going to give me an exception. But in this case, I expect this to happen. And I could end up putting a done here. Okay? This exception should happen. And this should end up passing. Okay? Just to prove a point here, if I end up doing this, I'm not going to hit that catch. And I'm going to end up timing out. So again, this will show you, you sort of want to always go from red to green to make sure you're testing what you're trying to test. So um, one of the other things we could do here is let's go in and commit this. So you could go over here and say uh, git dot add dot git dot commit. And we'll go over here and we'll specify uh, add unique constraint for name. Let's do a couple of other things here. We also decided that one of the things we wanted to do was that we wanted to make sure that when we deleted a user, we ended up deleting the user's stories. So let's actually see what happens now. So when we end up describing a user, let's do a describe, deleting a user. And what do we expect happens? Well, we expect um, it deletes the user's stories. So what's this expectation going to look like? Well, when we end up getting down here, again, assuming we end up deleting a user, what we want to end up seeing happen is we want to, uh, I'm going to put a done over here. And I'm going to go over here, and what I'm going to end up doing, I'm going to do this two different ways. I'm going to do it as a class method, um, and I'll also end up doing it as a what's called a hook, which we haven't looked at yet. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to specify, hey, look, um, DB uh, models. And when I get here, I'm going to look at the stories, find all, do it then. And I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to specify that I expect the um, my expectation here is to expect that the stories dot length, because I have two users that have two stories each, to equal two, and I'm going to put a done here, saying I'm done without errors, and in fact. If I end up getting a catch here, and I'll get a catch if my expectation fails. And then I could go in here and specify that I'm going to be done with the exception, which will specify, hey, look, you didn't end up passing your test, but your done was actually called. Can I read property find all of undefined? It's not stories. These are always singular. Story. Whoop, not with a UI. Okay, he is not defined. Thank you. Okay, and this doesn't happen because I haven't deleted any users. So let's do this a couple of different ways. Let's do it before each. And we'll go over here and we'll put in a done. And let's go over here and we'll say... Um, uh, db models dot user and we'll specify that we're going to um, delete with stories and we're going to just do this so that we can do this with just a user's name 
We'll delete me. And we'll go over here, and when this is done, we'll specify done. And in the case of uh, an error, we'll specify done with the error. This method doesn't exist, so we're going to get hung up in this before each, right? Delete with stories doesn't exist. So let's go over here to our user. And here is where we're going to put in our class methods. This is an object with keys. This is delete with stories. We're going to end up passing in a name for a user. And what we're going to do here is first find the user, and then we'll delete those user stories, and then we will go and delete the user. So again, I want to do a return here, and I'm going to specify uh, here, I'm going to say this dot find one where name is equal to name, in which case I'm going to have a user. In which case, once I have a user, I'm going to say DB models dot story. I want to delete the stories with that user. You do that with destroy. Destroy takes a where. User ID. User dot ID. Then we're going to go over here and we're going to do a then. And then we'll specify that... We're going to do a db models.user destroy. What are we going to destroy? Well, we're going to destroy a user where the name is equal to the name that was passed in here. So this is a class method. Let's just take a quick look. Missing after argument list. So let's just see where that is. One, two, three. Okay. And this seems to work. Now, that's fine, it works. But what if someone decides to go and destroy a user and they don't call this method? All right? One of the things that we could end up doing is we could end up putting a what's called a hook on this. Now, I, I found this to be a little bit weird just because, um, well, first, let me show you what the method looks like. It's, it's going to be very similar to what we have here. In fact, I'm going to go over here. We've got our class method here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and put hooks. So hooks are something that you can do. There's about 10 or 12, maybe more different hooks. And I'm going to say before destroy. Now, this is actually going to get past the user before the user ends up getting destroyed. And what this is going to be uh, uh, give me the ability to do here is that I'm going to be able to go over here and find all the user stories. And so I'll be able to specify uh, DB model story, destroy, where the user ID is equal to this user that's being destroyed. And again, I want this to happen first, so I do return there. And what that is going to give me the ability to do let's see here, one, two, before function, destroy. Thank you. Here's our class methods. Now, there's our class methods. Uh, line. Line 12. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? I didn't mean to take that out. I am going to take out this method. I mean, I'll leave it in here just so you can see it. But, I mean, I think you understand what the class methods do. 
I didn't mean to cut that. Better? Okay. So this should still pass, but what this is going to give me the ability to do is that on my models, instead of doing this, I'm going to go over here and specify user destroy. And put in a where name prof. Now, I found this interesting. My hook was not getting called when this happened. Now, what I'm assuming is that the hook for destroy happens because there's two ways that you could call destroy. You could call destroy on the big model, okay? which is our user model, you could also call it on an instance of user. It turns out that if I do this a little bit differently, and I say um, dbmodels.user, find one, and I'm going to take this where? Thank you. I want to see if you guys are awake. So if I end up doing that, uh, and then I do it then, and I get my user, Okay. And I end up uh, specifying user dot destroy. And I could put a catch in here too, although I don't expect it to get hit. It's not the worst thing in the world to do. If I end up doing that, man, I'm getting killed with these catches today. Uh, Done. Thank you. I'm getting a timeout here, and I think I'm getting a timeout here because I actually would like to do it then and say that I'm done. And fat arrow issue again. And now it'll end up passing. Let me just, could you just hold it so we can just get through this? Is it really important that you say it now? It'll, it can wait. <laughs> um, do you want to use a cascade method? Did it work? Yeah. There you go. A billion different ways to do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could let the database handle cascading, you could put settings on things. It's, there's only so much that you're really going to, that I would want to hit on doing this. The main thing is, you know, you, you get it to work. Not necessarily this is the most efficient. There are faster ways to go. Some of you people have noted there's a find or create that you could use. It's okay. It's not going to screw you up one way or the other. You could always find out that in SQLize there are methods that are added that could make it more efficient to get things done. But again, here sort of nice to demonstrate that you have these hooks because there are other things you might want to do in these hooks as well. So um, if you end up uh, doing this, right, this should end up working where you can delete a user. Uh, the only other thing that I want to do, and let's actually go through here. Uh, make sure stories get deleted with users. And one of the things that we could do here is also, just to uh, show this, um, one thing that we have in our routes is we're not taking advantage of our method for creating a story. So what we could actually do here is we could modify this a little bit by, say, db models story create with user. Again, if, assuming that this is what I ended up calling it, which I thought it was, uh, in which case we're sending this object in. And if we go over here, we could put in this object, which is going to be a uh, name request.body.name. We're going to have a title. 
request.body.title. We're going to have content, request.body.content. And we're going to have tags, request.body.tags, split, add a comma. And if we end up doing that, that should end up taking care of all this stuff. Again, assuming that A, I did this correctly, and B, also that we have, I have this uh, method right, so this is story, create with user, looks right. Okay, one thing that we don't have, I don't think, right now, is we don't have a test for this route. Again, I wanted to show you that you could end up doing a post test as well. So if we end up going to these routes, we could describe posting. So we could put a describe here, and we're going to do a post. And this is going to be to stories. And one thing we want to do here, we're going to say uh, it inserts the story. A couple of things that we could test for here. So one of the things we could do here is we could say that we're going to use our client. We're going to do a post to slash stories. And then we have to specify the data that we're going to send. Now, you know, I... One of the things that you'll see sometimes in uh, people using body parser, they'll put in JSON body parser. But my feeling is it's pretty easy to create an object that is URL encoded. If you didn't know what URL encoded means, it's going to look like this. Name equals, and I'm going to say my user. And title, my title and content, my content, and tags, foobar, right? So I'm going to end up sending this, and what I'm going to expect in terms of my status code is that I'm going to end up getting a 302. So I could go over here and put a then in. And I'll go over here and I'll specify that this is going to be my done, meaning I'm ready for my test. And we could also go over here uh, and do a catch. So again, if our expectation ends up failing, we do a done with our exception. Right, now that passes, but let's get it to fail. Let's say that we expected a 200. So it's telling us we have a 302. Now, what's kind of interesting about this, we could decide a couple of different ways how we want to do this. What I don't like to do is that when I'm doing routing tests, I really don't like to do model tests and routing tests at the same time. I could actually go and I could look at my stories and see that I have a new story. But what I would rather do, and one thing you could end up doing with this, is that if you end up making it down here, Nothing prevents you from doing a return and asking your client at this point to go to the home page, okay, which is where we have all our stories. In which case, you could do it then. And now we're going to have our result, and our expectation could be that we expect our result to contain my user. All right, that's one thing we could end up testing. Expect result, not the result, but the result.txt to contain the user. In which case, at this point, we could actually even go over here and do done at this point, and let's just see that works. Expected a 200. Got a 302. Let's change that back. Uh, client is not defined. Did we not call it client? 
Oh, thank you. Client.post. Uh, no, get. And all of our tests pass. Again, sometimes you just want to go red before you go green. Not to. Okay. And that's about the extent of it. So let's go back here. Again, there was another couple of tests, but I think that this, again, gives you an idea of how you could end up writing some of these tests. Let's go in. Wait, hold on one sec. Uh, text to contain. Um, all of these are passing. Uh, let me do this. Let me commit this. Uh, let's actually look what, what our git.diff will tell us what we did. Um, by the way, one of the things you could do, git.diff doesn't tell us anything now. But if we say git.diff staged, what's being staged for, for our next commit? Now I can see it. So what did I end up doing? Using create with user and adding some test. And now we could end up pushing it. So let me do this. Let's stop this recording.